Hi everyone, I'm back to read the next Felicity book. This is um, book five, Felicity Saves the Day, a summer story. And I'm here with Felicity and her horse Penny. Okay, and now I'm gonna read the inside of the book just so we can see what this one is about. Then we'll get started. Felicity Saves the Day, a summer story by Valerie Tripp. Summer on grandfather's plantation next to the York River is heaven for Felicity. She can be out of doors all day long, riding horses with grandfather, playing with Nan and William, and exploring the woods. One day, Felicity finds a secret note. It is from Ben, her father's apprentice, and it is a cry for help. Ben has broken his apprentice, ship agreement with Mr. Merriman and has run away to join George Washington's army. Felicity plunges into a dangerous adventure when she goes to help Ben. She must use all the strength, courage, and wisdom she has to try to save the day. Okay, and let's get started with book five. And first we will find out about the characters in this story. And here they are. We have father, Felicity's father, who owns one of the general stores in Williamsburg. Mother, Felicity's mother, who takes care of her family with love and pride. Felicity, a spunky, sprightly colonial girl growing up just before the American Revolution in 1774. And there's Nan, Felicity's sweet and sensible sister, who is seven years old. William, Felicity's three-year-old brother, who likes mischief and mud puddles. There's grandfather, Felicity's generous grandfather who understands what is important. Ben Davidson, a quiet apprentice living with the Merrimans while learning to work in father's store. Penny, the spirited independent horse Felicity loves. Mr. Wentworth, a gentleman who is a neighbor of grandfather's, and Mrs. Wentworth, a lady who has strong opinions. And here they are. Let's get started. Chapter one is called King's Creek Plantation. Felicity wanted to whoop for joy. She ran so fast she was almost flying. Down the wide stone steps she ran down the gentle sloping green lawn and through the garden, bright with flowers. She ran all the way to the edge of the bluff and there she stopped. Below her was the river, wide and blue and dazzling with light as it flowed along its way to the sea. Felicity grinned. Every summer of her life, she had come to stay at grandfather's plantation on the York River. And every summer, the very first thing she did when she arrived was run to the river. Summer did not begin until she'd seen the river's wide open sweep and heard its welcoming murmur. Hello, river, thought Felicity. Here I am back again. What adventures do you have in store for me this summer? Grandfather's plantation was called King's Creek Plantation. It was about halfway between Williamsburg and Yorktown. Corn, wheat, and oats grew in the rolling fields above the riverbank. Cattle, sheep, and horses grazed in the sweet clover pastures. The fields, the slave quarters, and all the outbuildings of the plantation were on either side of the main house. Between the house and the river was a lawn flanked by both sides of dense woods. The lawn was green and broad. It was laced with white shell paths and decorated with flower beds. Felicity turned from the river and saw her sister Nan and her brother William hurrying toward her along one of the paths. Mother and grandfather strolled behind at a more gracious pace. Mother's parasol floated like a butterfly above the colorful flowers. Lissy, said Nan as she and William reached the riverbank. I've brought your gathering basket. Grandfather says the first blackberries are ready to pick. Blackberries, 
said William, all out of breath. I'll eat the most. I laughed Felicity, and you, sh and you shall most likely eat them before they're even in your basket. Felicity, do you remember where the best blackberry bushes are? asked Grandfather with a twinkle in his eye. Indeed I do, said Felicity. They're in the thicket at the edge of the woods. Quite right, said Grandfather. Felicity smiled at him. You know I remember everything about King's Creek Plantation, Grandfather, she said. I believe it. You love it as much as I do, said Grandfather proudly. Mother slipped her hand through the crook of Grandfather's elbow. Off with you then, children, she said cheerfully. Your grandfather and I will wait in the shade by the house while you gather blackberries for us. Felicity grinned at Nan and William. Let's race, she said, and the three children set off at a run toward the berry bushes. That's my Lissy, laughed Mother to Grandfather. She's not here an hour, and already she's running as wild as one of your colts. The bushes were thick with berries. In no time at all, Nan and Felicity had filled their baskets. William's basket was only half full, but he himself was covered with berry juice as dark as ink. After the children washed their hands, they presented the berries to Grandfather and Mother. Thank you, said Grandfather. He popped a berry into his mouth. These blackberries are fit for the king. We have something else for you too, Grandfather, said Felicity. She handed him a package. It is a gift from Father's store. Mr. Merriman had stayed in Williamsburg to run his store with Ben, his apprentice, to help him. Father let, Father, let me choose it, said William. He watched impatiently as Grandfather unwrapped the package. It's a bird bottle, William explained. You put it in on the side of the building, and the birds build nests in it and eat any insects that, that come around. How very fine, said Grandfather. I thank you. Of course, birds build their nests in the spring, not the summer, said Nan in her sweetly serious voice. There's no sense in putting up a bird bottle now. Tis the middle of July. Felicity saw William's disappointed face. Oh, but the birds will surely want to visit the bird bottle, she said qu quickly. I think we should put it up right away, don't you, Grandfather? Yes, indeed, said Grandfather, and so the three children helped Grandfather attach the bird bottle to the smokehouse just under the eave of the roof. When they were finished, Grandfather said, There, now perhaps I will have birds as well as children visiting this summer. He put his arm around Felicity's shoulders and smiled down at her. All my visitors make me very happy. And that evening, while Nan, William, and Felicity were playing battle door and shuttlecock on the lawn, they saw a bird fluttering around the bird bottle. They stood quietly. The bird perched on the bottle, tilted its head, and studied them with the bright black eyes. He chirped mightily for a, for a while, as if to claim his ownership of the bird bottle. Then he flew away. Why didn't he go inside the bird bottle, asked William. He's probably too busy, Felicity answered. She did, doesn't want to be indoors anyway. There's too much to do out of doors. That was certainly how Felicity felt. She loved summers at Grandfather's plantation because she could be out of doors almost all day long. It seemed to her that life on the plantation was busy and lazy at the same time. There were a great many things to do, all of them pleasant, and there was never any hurry about getting them done. Felicity's days began early and peaceful, peacefully. Every morning before dawn, Felicity and Grandfather met at the stable. Grandfather rode his old stallion, Major, and Felicity sat side saddle on, on a ladylike mare named Jessamine. Together they rode at an easy trot to the bluff above the river. There they waited for the sunrise. The early morning was so still, Felicity thought she could almost hear the sun rising. It seems to whisper as it slid smoothly up from behind the hills, warming the gray clouds to pink and the black hills to green and the silvery river to blue. The sun filled the day with light and color. 
Well now, Felicity, my dear, grandfather would say, as they felt the sun on their faces, let us put this day to good use. And they would gather their reins and turn their horses toward the fields. Some mornings, Felicity and grandfather rode from one end of the plantation to the other, all the way from King's Creek to the old footpath that led to Yorktown. There was so much to see. Summer was a generous season. Strawberries grew in thick clusters along the edges of the fields. Fat watermelons and muskmelons grew in the melon patch. Plump peaches, nectarines, and figs grew in the orchards, just waiting to be plucked and eaten. Lavender grew in the sunny herb garden. The air was sweet with the smell of sun on flowers and fruit. And while the morning was still cool, Felicity and grandfather inspected the green fields. She'd listened while grandfather spoke to the field hands and the overseer about the weather. She'd let go of the reins while Jessamine grazed with the sheep and cows in the grassy meadows. Most of all, Felicity loved to watch the horses running in the huge fenced pasture. Grandfather loved horses too. He, he understood how Felicity felt when she talked about Penny the horse she had secretly tamed and then had helped run away from its cruel owner, Mr. Nye. Whenever I see horses, I search for Penny, Felicity said. I've never stopped hoping that someday I will see Penny again. Do you think that's being foolish, Grandfather? No, my dear, said Grandfather. I think that's being faithful. When the morning grew warmer, Grandfather and Felicity would head back to the house through the woods. Grandfather would often stop to point out the name and name the wild herbs and other plants they passed. That's witch hazel, he said one day. Its juice makes a good medicine to put on a bruise. If you gather some sprigs, we'll borrow the cook's mortar and pestle, and I'll show you how to grind witch hazel and to extract its juice. Felicity slipped down from her saddle to pick sprigs of witch hazel and put them in her gathering basket. One morning, Grandfather told Felicity about the times when he was a young man who had just arrived in Virginia from England. I often went west on hunting trips, he said. I lived alone in these woods for these, like these for days. But where did you sleep? asked Felicity. What did you eat? Fallen leaves gave me shelter. Pine boughs were my bed, answered Grandfather. I hunted birds and game. I ate roots and berries. Twas a fine, simple life. It sounds so adventurous, said Felicity. She imagined living in the cool, dark woods under a fallen tree, where she would be surrounded by the smell of rich, damp earth. How wonderful to be so wild and free. The earth is happy to provide us with everything we need, said Grandfather, as they left their horses at the stable. We must only be wise enough to know how to use it. And that is the end of chapter one. We will read chapter two next time.